Our next guest is an entrepreneur that has been disrupting the lead generation industry through the world's largest professional network, LinkedIn. Not the CEO, who has just quit after 11 years, I might add, but at the Social Media Marketing Awards last year, he was recognized by the industry as LinkedIn Marketer of the Year. His name is Nathaniel Bibby, and he joins us now. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well. Uh, LinkedIn's changing a lot. As I say, the CEO is just stepping down after 11 years. Yeah, I actually heard of hearing about this for the first time, and I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, <laughs> happened overnight, so okay. some big news happening there as well. Talk to us about how LinkedIn has changed over the time you've been following it. Yeah, sure. So when I started on LinkedIn, there was only 200 content creators, Tony Robbins, Richard Branson, guys like this. Um, and then it's become more of a content platform for everybody. Um, first off with articles and now videos become more prevalent. In the last 18 months, we've seen session time, the amount of time that people spend on the platform, increase by three times. Wow. Why do you think that is? Are we all looking for jobs or are we all just becoming more interested in our professional careers? as we perhaps shift away from things like Facebook? It's yeah, purely because of the organic reach on LinkedIn and the news feeds serving the users better content now. That's a credit to LinkedIn. And a lot of the tension that was on Facebook is shifting over now to LinkedIn. It is true. When I think of my own behavior, um, you know, I joined Facebook back in 2007 when it was just becoming a thing. And the growth of that was obviously huge. And you would mix your professional with your personal, etc. And then as your parents get on. <laughs> a lot of us looked elsewhere. So uh, kind of, I went to Instagram mostly, but that's not really very professional, mm. obviously. And then uh, LinkedIn was always that thing that I was getting emails saying someone has added you or this has happened. And I never really took it that seriously. Mm. But now we're seeing that huge numbers of Australians are actually turning to it. Yeah, that's right. And the um, statistics say that if you're in business to business, that the content on LinkedIn is three times as trusted as some of the other social platforms. So, you know, it might be a little bit more expensive to advertise on LinkedIn, for example, but if it's three times as trusted, then it's technically three times as valuable. So tell me about your business. What do you actually do? How do you do the marketing and the content, et cetera? What is it you do with LinkedIn? Well, um, I delegated what I do on LinkedIn very early to an assistant, and I thought, well, if I can delegate it to an assistant, why can't business de delegate it to us? Yeah, sure. And so we offer lead generation services. Oh, wait, so whenever you're on LinkedIn, I'm, I'm actually looking at what your assistant's written. Well, it's, it's all strategy, right? So <laughs> it's, um, something that uh, a lot of people do wrong is they think of their content as they do it and so yeah. we help them map out a strategy and handle the distribution as well yeah and with the content side of things and then there's appointment setting which you can't do on like other platforms that's really interesting about the strategy for LinkedIn talk to us about you know when a business comes to you and they say we realize we need to do more on LinkedIn there's an audience there just walk us through the process as to how that actually works yeah sure well if you take a back step like a couple of things um, a couple of reasons why people get content marketing wrong in general is t technically we're impatient and we're selfish right yeah so I try to get them to understand that you need to actually be caring to order, in order to add value and also to be a little bit patient because longer term that's how you build a brand um, and then we map out what are, how do we add value to the customer so it starts with the target audience the wrong thing to do is to sit in your boardroom with some of your employees right with a whiteboard and try and map out what your content marketing plan would look like you need to go to your target audience and find out what their frustrations are what their problems are and how many people come to you and don't even know who their target audience is uh, nine times out of ten, that's the case. Yeah. yeah. So you aren't really just there to help with the marketing strategy for LinkedIn. You end up essentially assisting them in drilling down who are you trying to reach. Exactly. Yeah, and, and sometimes we have to help them scale the business as well because at the end of the day, if they don't get return on investment, they're not going to stay a client. You know, And so people think, oh, um, it's a good problem to have a whole bunch of leads. But a lot of businesses, if they haven't had a huge influx of leads before, they don't actually know how to deal with the scalability of the whole thing. Talk to us about some of your clients, if you can. Um, sure. I understand it's Apple and even Westpac. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> those are the guys at the bigger end of the spectrum. We yeah. work with everything down to small businesses. Pretty sure you don't have to tell them who their client base is. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, I mean, they're, they're, companies like that, they want to do everything internally. So it's a lot of consulting and a right. lot of training and educating yeah. and empowering their teams. Compared to when you're working with a medium or a small, what happens there? Then they can literally, <clears throat> excuse me, they can literally outsource the entire thing to my business, wow. which means that we can, we can scale the business extremely fast if they've got the sales processes to handle it. 
Which do you find to be the biggest challenge dealing with organizations where it's kind of internal or dealing with people where they come to you and they're not entirely sure of what they need to be doing, they just know they need to be doing something and I guess they hand over that entire creative process to you? Um, definitely at the, the bigger end of the spectrum, I see more of an impact and they tend to know what to measure as well. Um, right. So generally, we've not, there's businesses we work with at least have a marketing manager and a sales team in order for us to, to work with them. So in terms of knowing what to measure, how do you measure success on LinkedIn? Um, I think the most important thing is return on investment. I think you need to be making money, you know? And once that's taken care of, then you can look at investing in brand and, and look at some of the vanity metrics as well. Um, but what happens on social media is because there is a scoreboard, you can look at how many followers you have and how, how many likes you get, that it becomes a distraction for a lot of businesses and they measure success that way and they don't actually know if they are making money on social media or not. What about spending money on LinkedIn in terms of to, to advertise, to get your content out there? Obviously, a lot of people mm -hmm. boost on Facebook. They put content up on YouTube with a, an ad as well. But we are constantly told that LinkedIn is way more expensive. Do you think that it's a fair cost that LinkedIn charges in terms of um, for, for ads or do you think that they're, they've got to bring it down? Um, look, I think they will bring it down. Um, I think it's fair, absolutely, given that it's more trusted. Mm. Uh, however, I think companies are very quick to invest in expanding their reach yep. when they haven't even got good content in the first place. Right. But does it prevent people from doing the right thing and actually investing in LinkedIn because of absolutely. the cost? Absolutely. Because when they look at return on investment, as you just mentioned, mm. quite often YouTube's dirt cheap, Facebook is, it's become a harder place to, mm. to reach as many people. And do you think that might be sending people towards LinkedIn because Facebook is just yeah. full of it? Absolutely, absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised if you were able to sponsor a post from a personal profile on LinkedIn soon. Really? Because it's, it's not like Facebook where it's a personal profile, it's a professional profile, yeah. isn't it? It's actually quite surprising in a way that that hasn't happened already, that people aren't already able to, to I suppose, boost their own content to show the yeah. world what they're doing. Well, th when they did the second round of capital raising, uh, I saw the business plan that LinkedIn had. Oh, it, was wow. a, it was a Rolodex of CVs and rec recruiters would use it to find talent. There was no mention of salespeople or marketers at all wow. in the business plan. So this is this market they didn't cater for. You know, it's much larger. So how recruiters. long have you been doing this for? And talk to us about the growth because I understand mm. that it wasn't exactly easy kicking off for you. Yeah. Um, so I've been doing this for seven years and managing my own business for five years. Um, when I started my company, it wasn't like I just had this great idea and wanted to, to launch into it. I was a part of a backdoor listing on the stock market with my previous employer. I hadn't been paid in three months. I was 20 grand in debt, was getting evicted. Wow. Um, my electricity got cut out. Wow. And I was in a situation where I had to do something quite radical to get out of this financial difficulty I was in. And uh, so I... Where were you living at the time? I was living in um, St Kilda East. Oh, there you go, right. And um, you know, power cut off, <laughs> and so I had to connect two, desk, uh, two extension cords together, run them down the stairwell of my apartment building, yeah. connect the other end to a desk lamp, and I wrote my business plan under that desk lamp that night. So hang on, where was the, where was the power actually coming from? From the common area in the apartment block. <laughs> <laughs> the startup guide to paying your power bill. Yeah, well look, I mean, <laughs> some, uh, some people say you need inspiration or desperation mm. in life sometimes, and I've got desperation. And perspiration <laughs> as well, when it's all going <laughs> to hell. Yeah. Um, but from there, how quick was the growth? So a lot of people expect, mm. like, you don't have a huge amount of money at that stage. You're $20,000 in debt, you've got no power. Mm. Growth doesn't happen quickly, so how yeah. long were you hanging that cable out the door? We made $15,000 in a first, well I made $15,000 in my first day, it was only me with no power. Wow, in your first day? Yeah. Yikes, you showed the power company. Yeah. I mean, I was, <laughs> it's, well, we had extensive growth because we're the only company in Australia doing LinkedIn marketing and so when the conversation comes up, you know, when somebody wants a LinkedIn speaker, we got the call. And yeah. so by 11 months in, I had nine people working for me. So I guess your, your story there is about how being first in an industry that no one else is playing in, that you can see potential even if others can't see potential. And there's the money. Well, I could see it was the most effective way to generate leads online. Mm. And a lot of people didn't know what they were doing on there, you know? But what about trying to convince people? Because if people don't know about a new technology, generally, mm -hmm. particularly in Australia, we can be quite conservative about trying new things. That's true. Did you find that a big part of your challenge was actually trying to get people to adopt LinkedIn, let alone spend and market on it? Yes, yes, it was. It was education a lot at the start. 
And now it's very different. And now it's like, we're spending $100,000 on Facebook. Tell us how we can spend it on LinkedIn, you know? So they want to shift. Absolutely, yeah. Why do you think that is? Um, it's just return on investment. And there's a lot of prominent people in the marketing and business world that are talking about LinkedIn. So they're very aware that there's a lot of attention there. It's you know tripled the session times. And so they just want to know how to do it because it's very different to the other social platforms. So you have now moved to Perth. Is that to get away from the debt collectors from the power <laughs> company or? No, it's not. It's to uh, be closer to my family. Oh, I see, of course. <laughs> the British twang we've got there, I see. Yes. Well, I guess Perth is a little bit closer to the UK. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what's it like in terms of competition now? So obviously where you began, you know, it was um, mm -hmm. you, you, I guess, cornered the market in terms of marketing here. Now, uh, every day on my door comes a tap from someone wanting to do some sort of marketing on LinkedIn. How do you stay ahead of the pack? Um, yeah, I, people mentioned that to me, that the, the competition was increasing. And I've had a look at uh, the competition that's out there. And what I've decided to do to differentiate myself is focus on the corporate market. I think a lot of them are um, taking opportunities uh, of the, op well, taking the opportunity for what it is. They might have been business coaches or recruiters before. Whereas what I did is I was doing all digital marketing. I was doing AdWords, I was doing SEO, I was doing yeah, Facebook. Yeah, yeah. And LinkedIn was going gangbusters, so yeah. I was like, well, get out of the others. I'll deliver this. Can you do me a favor, and anyone you talk to, please say, no more car videos. I haven't seen these car videos. What? I heard about Laura get talking on, about get it. Get on my LinkedIn. Please get on my, all I have is, hey man, oh, hold on, I've got my phone. Hey man, I've just had this great idea, like, I, I'm gonna, I was in the shower, and now I'm driving, and you're like, would you just crash? It, but, it's, it's, probably, it's probably the people you're connected to, maybe the guys in the media industry. <laughs> the show-offs in the media industry. So, are you, would I be safe to say that a lot of people are kind of shifting from Facebook to putting their personal fun side on Instagram and their professional side on LinkedIn and that's their world these days? More or less, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think when, when you just work- Just the chat functionality I find is, is what keeps me on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The mm. message is great. Yeah. I think with, when you're working for somebody else though, they're a lot more concerned about what they do on LinkedIn than when you're working for yourself. Yes. You know, and, and rightfully so. Like yeah, a lot of the right. leaders are very nervous about social media. Really? Mm. How do you deal with that? Well, I mean, they are worried that it's not going to be in line with brand. But what I think they, the leaders should be doing is empowering their team to be individuals on social media so that more people can relate. It's really become quite stark. We've seen a few <laughs> stuffy old types in the finance world who just don't understand a streaming network. They don't have Netflix. They don't have KO or Stan or anything like that. They don't own an Apple TV. They're still in Watch Channel 9 News <laughs> at 6 yeah. and then switch over to Foxtel to download their movie. Um, the world is very quickly changing as the share prices of these places will show us. Absolutely. And yet the leaders of many of these larger financial based companies kind of haven't got the memo. They're going to get it because I read a statistic recently, a study showed that we touch our telephones, whether it's swiping or whatever, 2,600 times a day. Yeah. You can't ignore statistics. But like if that. you don't know what you're doing, Quite often the way mm. that people overcome that is to become more conservative, yeah. to stick to what they know put and their head in really, the yeah, yeah, put their head in the stand. Mm. Um, it's, it's been interesting to watch. Yeah, I mean, there's getting to a point now where you won't survive in business if you do that, especially in the finance industry or any of these bigger corporates. Yeah. They really kind of ignore social media. Anything else you want to add? Um, just get on LinkedIn, guys. Give it a crack. You know, like they, LinkedIn give the uh, content creators a push mm. on their first piece of content, so it's a bit of an incentive to. We found crack. that the video side of LinkedIn actually hasn't been as good lately. We've noticed, I think it was about November, that if we post a photograph, and mm -hmm. others have said this to us as well, mm. photos are going gangbusters, but the videos are actually not getting as many views organically as they used to. It's about having a mix of content, right? LinkedIn wants to give users that are doing a mix of content yeah, more I preference. See. So don't just do videos, do photos and as well. Written, and articles as well. And articles too. You'll f probably find the one that you do the least will work the best because it's trying to encourage you to do more of it. Interesting, very, very interesting. The old <laughs> silly algorithm out there that confuses us all. Nathaniel, thanks so much for your time. Our pleasure to be here.